I'm Dustin Chase for Texas Art and Film, also for Galveston.com. I'm here with Joel Edgerton and the director of The Odd Life of Timothy Green, Peter Hedges. Hodges, um, I'm going to start with you. i got a couple questions for you. Um, yeah. From Animal Kingdom to one of my favorite films last year, Warrior, which I even brought with me, um, <laughs> The Odd Life of Timothy Green is a little bit different from the movies I saw in your filmography. It's kind of a rare kind of family film where you kind of play a little bit more rougher characters. Yeah. So what was it about Jim Green that made you choose this project compared to what we usually see you in? Uh, I needed to put the guns down and take my get not punch anybody for a kind of a, for a moment there. No, look, I, I I I appreciate story first, and you know all those other films that you mentioned, Warrior and Animal Kingdom, and all the other stuff that I get involved in. It always starts with a good story, and you know the fact that some of those other movies are about more kind of you know dramatic subject matter has more conflict or uh, violence or malevolence in them. It's just a byproduct of. Uh, the, the story that captured me um, and this was a softer thing and it's it's such a kind of a, a optimistic and positive story um, but it's the same reason I loved Animal Kingdom and I love Warriors I just love good stories and good characters and that's what Peter had created and, and the situation was set up to make a movie of this thing and, and, and I actually chased them around you know wanting to be involved in it well, speaking of uh, good stories, you have two other films coming out later this year, uh, very high-profile films, The Great Gatsby and Zero Dark Thirty, yeah. which are very awards-attention kind of films. Um, what can we expect from you in those films that are completely different from what we've seen in, in this and in the other hardcore stuff? Again, all the mixed bag of stuff. I mean, you know, th look, it's the beauty of being an actor if you have the luxury to not be uh, tethered to, say, a TV show for a long period of time and you're a jobbing actor, the risk is you may not get a job, but the, the benefit is you might get to just sort of hit all the different sk skipping stones in a way. As you, one day you're doing this, one day you're doing something completely different. You're a Navy SEAL and you're a Tom Buchanan and you're Jim Green and it, it's, I love that, I love it. And uh, the risk is you don't make it a vanity project about making the alterations, that you just stay really true to each job. and, and um, and get, you get to indulge in a new angle of life that you may never have discovered before. And it's a real blessing. I'm looking at you now. <laughs> I, want, I want you to ask him something. Well, I'm good. So <laughs> you studied at the in North Carolina, correct? I did. And I graduated from the University of North Carolina at Asheville. Oh, you did? Yes, and I noticed that in, on the International Movie Database, you guys shot one of the scenes at the Biltmore Estate. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, once we'd wrapped filming, uh, we, we'd shot the movie in February. There were no leaves in Atlanta. <laughs> so uh, in, in the fall, uh, we were under budget, and, and the head of the studio called and said, why don't you go somewhere beautiful and shoot for two days? And uh, if, I know you're happy with the movie, but if you find come up with something, it will be great. I said, well, I want to go to the Biltmore Estate, <laughs> because of course they shot Bean there, right. one of my favorite films at the Biltmore Estate. So off we went with a great crew, and CJ and Odea, and a number of the shots on the bike ride, mm -hmm. and then later when um, she's holding her arms up and he's teaching her how to hold up her arms, and mm -hmm. all the leaves are falling and he catches a leaf. Mm -hmm. Those shots, which are scopish, mm -hmm. well, no real dialogue scenes, more shots that enhanced the movie and you felt nature more. So, so it was just kind of like on the back side of the property? Uh, we were all over. All over. We were all over. It was great. I spent about three days scouting it. Cool. I mean, it's a great property, <laughs> it really right? Is. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cool. Um, so from a director's standpoint, also for you, kind of the same with Joel, this is a more lighthearted film from what we've seen you direct and, and write. I mean, Pieces of April had its severe moments, but this is certainly a more lighthearted approach from some of the stuff that we've seen from you. So kind of the same question, what was it about this well, one you that know, made me kind of it's switch it, on? It's interesting. For me, um, as opposed to, say, my previous film, Dan, in real life, this film has much more has much sharper teeth, perhaps because I'm so proud of the fact that the first 15 minutes there's not a laugh, and that the film is born out of this real ache and this yearning that they have to have a child. There's true, there's a lightness to it. One of my favorite classical composers is Vivaldi, and there's just a real skip to it, and I wanted the movie to feel like that. Um, you know, uh, I had written a novel for 12 years I've been writing that was rather dirty and dark, and I felt like I needed a bath, kind of emotionally and creatively. 
I also feel like there aren't a lot of films out there that families can go to, even though I don't think of it as a kid's film, I think of it as a film for adults that they can take their kids to. So, um, but, but the truth is, what I hope for in everything I make is for it to be as funny as possible and then break your heart. It, and, 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 and this felt like a great opportunity for that. So it, for me, it's also about everything I care about. I'm a dad right now. I'm always going to be a dad as long as my kids will continue to claim me. Um, even if they don't claim me, I'm a dad. But what I guess I mean is, it's, it's, um, I wanted to make a film that made me just look at how I am as a parent and how, how we are parenting and how do we get out of the way of our kids and, so that they can become who they are destined to be. And, and can I make a film where kids can look at their parents and go, okay, they're not perfect, but, but they, they do kind of like me and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be okay. Awesome.